Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to take another quick look at the game Survivalistic. Now, for those of you that are regular viewers of my YouTube channel, you'll know that I've covered this game already. I think it was episode 97, uh, published sometime in January of 2014. Well, uh, since then, the developer has updated the game, redesigned it, uh, based on reviewer and customer feedback. So we're here today just to quickly see what those changes are, maybe even go over the game again, just for those of you tuning in for the first time. Uh, speaking of which, um, the game itself is for two to four players, and uh, that's pretty cool because uh, the original game only supported up to two players. So there is one change already. The uh, minimum age requirement is 10 and up, and the average play time is about 30 minutes. Now, as far as the concept of this game goes, um, it's still the same. Uh, you're still going to be trying to uh, maintain and uh, upkeep a group of survivors. Uh, basically, they're called clan members in this game. And what you'll be doing is you'll be trying to nourish them, and you'll be combating other players' uh, clan members to try and eliminate them from the game. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the new components and see how the game is played. Okay, now this is just a very brief snapshot of the components in question. Um, if you've seen my other video uh, of this game, uh, you'll notice that there aren't too many changes as far as the look goes. Uh, your box is still roughly the same. Um, I believe it may be a little bigger than my previous one. It handles the components a lot better. Um, that's not to say, however, that the uh, art on it isn't fantastic. I mean, I just enjoy looking at this. It's just very detailed. And if you look at the card backs, for example, um, the color scheme uh, is pretty eye-catching, at least in my opinion. Um, as far as the cards go, um, same look. You've got your water cards and your food cards down here. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. Your water cards come in different uh, values, basically one, two, and three. And the food cards are the same way. You've got one, two, three and three. And the water cards and these food cards serve to nourish your clan members or your survivors. And uh, just like with the previous uh, copy that I reviewed, you've got your name of the survivor on top, you've got uh, different attributes listed here, strength, agility, wisdom. You've also got a food cost and a water cost here, which is associated with these water and food cards. And you've also got any special abilities that they may have listed along the bottom. Now you can also equip these survivors or clan members with equipment cards, and they do various things, basically giving uh, the survivor in question a passive buff of some sort. Like equipment, for example, this hatchet will give a survivor plus three strength. You've got some other ones here that do some um, other things, the hunting dog, for example, the first aid kit, and so on and so forth. Well, there hasn't been that many changes as far as the look goes when it comes to the box and the cards and all of that. Um, the major changes really come into play with the manual. Um, not so much uh, with the rules in question. There are some rule changes, but um, the uh, developer has redesigned the manual to make it a little bit more user-friendly, uh, which is something I really appreciate. Um, it makes uh, everything is laid out a little bit neater. Um, the rules seem to be more organized uh, than in the previous version that I covered in January. So uh, kudos to that. Um, people that are trying to learn the game for the first time will have a much easier time trying to pick this up on their first run. Now besides that, you've also got more dice in this copy. Um, I believe the previous version only came with, I want to say, under 10 dice. This one comes with a total of uh, 16. You've got 12 red dice, which serve as your uh, health counters, and 4 black dice, which are used for combat. And I believe the reason that more dice were included is because the player count has increased from 2 to 4. Game setup is still treated the same way, uh, in that the resource pile or the deck of cards is shuffled, and each player will receive a certain number of cards to form their starting hand. Um, now, in the original game that I reviewed, um, each player received a total of eight cards. In the redesigned version, each player will have um, only five cards to work with. So, um, there's less choices for players to make in that regard, and players will have to be more careful with the cards they're playing um, at the time they play them, and I'll explain why in a minute. Um, besides that, um, you just simply put the uh, set of dice off to the side for the time being until they're actually needed.
To determine who goes first, players will just simply roll one die, and the player with the highest value will get to go first. Now, uh, the first turn of the game does limit players a bit on what they can do. Um, there are a total of five different actions that a player can take, and I'll go ahead and zoom in uh, on the manual just so you can see them. Uh, you can set and attach cards, nourish clan members, use equipment card effects, use clan member abilities, and battle other clan members. However, for the very first turn of the game, you are limited to the first two actions, set and attach cards, and nourish clan members. So let's go ahead and take a look at my hand just to see what I have. Uh, let me zoom in on that. We've got an equipment card there. Uh, we've got a food card. That's plus three. Water, plus three. And two clan members. So to set and attach cards, all that really entails is just taking a clan member from your hand, placing them in front of you, making them active. And uh, you are limited to having three clan members on the table at a time. Now, that is all for the set and attach, uh, except that you can attach equipment cards to your clan members if you want to. You are limited to having three equipment cards on a particular clan member at a time. And you can't take them back once you put them down. So let's go ahead and put this plus three agility equipment card on this clan member. Now for the other action that I was talking about that you can make on your first move, that is the Nourish Clan Members. Um, in the previous version of this game it was called uh, Keep uh, Clan Members Surviving. But I like the word nourish better, so the developer decided to use the word nourish uh, and replace surviving. So in this case, you can nourish these uh, clan members by playing food and water cards on them. In this case, you'll take a look at the food cost and the water cost of the survivor in question. The food cost is 2, the water cost is 3, so I guess it would make sense to go ahead and play a food plus 3 and a water plus 3. That'll keep this particular clan member nourished. Now once players get past the first part of the game, or the first turn, um, they'll have a lot more options available to them, and that leads me to turn sequence. Again, let's briefly look at the manual to see what that all entails. Uh, the turn sequence, again, I do appreciate that the manual is laid out the way it is now. It was redesigned to make it a lot more user-friendly. Uh, turn sequence, the first thing that you'll want to do is draw one card from the resource pile to begin your turn. In the original version of the game, it had the player drawing two cards. So that has changed a bit, uh, and again, this will limit the player on what they can actually do on their turn. So they'll have to think a bit more on the choices that they make. Uh, they don't want to put all these clan members down, for example, then not have the water or food cards available to nourish them. So let's go ahead and do that now. And it's worth noting that you'll be doing this for the first turn of the game as well. Uh, the second thing that you'll do, I've already covered this. These are all the different actions that you can take. Um, do any of the following in any order and as often as you are allowed. So you can do as many of these as you want, so as long as it's legal to. Again, uh, set and attach cards, nourish clan members, use equipment card effects, use clan member abilities, and battle other clan members. And it even has the page number listed right next to that particular topic, which is cool. So you can flip right to it if you have any questions. Uh, end your turn whenever you wish. Put health counters on your malnourished clan members. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the different actions that you have available to you. Now in regards to the actions, I've already covered the set and attach cards and the nourish clan members portion, so I'm going to skip those actions and just go to the next one, which is the uh, use equipment card effects. Now as you can see, uh, some of these equipment cards are uh, passive in nature. For example, this one just gives a straight buff to the agility attribute on this clan member. Where other at, uh, equipment cards, however, um, take more of an active role and can be used actively to do various things. The water purifier, for example, as long as this card remains on your side of the field, double the amount of water provided by all your water cards. The inflatable raft, once during your turn, you may draw one card from the resource pile. So it may pay to have some of these cards out on the table as they actively will reward your character or your team in various ways. Another action you can take is to use your clan member abilities. Now, on the bottom of every uh, one of these clan member cards um, is some type of ability that can be used to help your team out. Um, Adapt, for example, this Radcliffe character can use the Adapt ability. Discard any number of cards from your hand, then draw a card from the resource pile for each card that you discarded. Um, this Murdoch character scavenge, uh, search the resource pile, which is the deck, for one equipment card, and then add it to your hand. Shuffle the resource pile afterwards. So as you can see, these various characters or clan members have different abilities, so definitely check those out before you play them, just to see what kind of uh, character or ability would suit your uh, team best during that part of the game. 
Now the final action that a player could take on their turn uh, is the combat um, other clan members action. And all that simply entails is uh, picking one of your nourished clan members. Again, they have to be um, nourished both with water and food to be fully nourished. And they'll be allowed to pick someone else to attack. And when they do that, they'll have to compare the values to see how many combat dice they get. Um, in this case, let's go ahead and zoom in on these two characters. Let's say that Murdoch is attacking this Miyagi character. Uh, Murdoch has a strength of 9, Miyagi has a strength of 3. Now, uh, normally uh, you would go ahead and look at your equipment cards to see what kind of uh, buffs they would get on each individual attribute. So you want to look at that uh, before calculating the final values. But in this case, Murdoch has a 9, Miyagi has a 3. So Murdoch would receive one combat die for beating him on that particular stat. Agility, 3, and Miyagi has 1, so Murdoch would win again, gets another combat die. Finally, Wisdom. He has a Wisdom of 4, and Miyagi has a Wisdom of 6. So, in this case, Miyagi would win a combat die. In the event that uh, one character ends up beating the other player or other character or clan member on all three stats, the uh, losing, not losing clan member, but the one that's uh, pretty much outmatched will get at least one combat die. So, in the end, a total of up to four combat dice will be assigned. Now, at this point, uh, both players players will go ahead and roll um, all of their dice that they've won, and uh, the player with the highest value shown will be the winner. Now, the winner of combat would obviously get some type of reward, but the uh, type of reward has changed a bit since I've last reviewed this game. In the previous uh, version of this game, uh, the loser got four of these hit counters added to their character card. Uh, in the new roll set, however, that is completely gone. In this case, all you'll do is take a uh, card, an attached card, from the losing clan member's card. So in this case, Murdoch beat out Miyagi, so Murdoch would get to take one of these two cards away from Miyagi. And what he'll do is he'll pick one and then add it to their hand, which they can then play on a future turn. Now you've heard me use the word um, health counters at uh, various points in this video. And uh, for those of you that don't know anything about this uh, game, basically what's going to happen is you're going to use these red dice over here to uh, simulate your current uh, clan member's health. You'll be placing um, a value on top of this card. For example, um, if this player had two uh, hit counters, um, you would place a two on the card like so. If it had four hit counters, you'd place uh, four health counters, you'd place a four on the card, and so on and so forth. If at any time um, the clan member has six health counters, they die and they are eliminated from the table or from the game. So anyway, uh, getting back to a player's turn, um, that covers all of the actions and that will actually lead me to the uh, checking for the nourished and malnourished step of the uh, player turn. And what you're going to do with that is you're going to see which of your clan members are malnourished and then assign um, health counters appropriately. If a player has... Um, is fully nourished in that uh, they have they meet all of their food and water requirements then they won't get any health counters if they don't have enough food they'll get one if they don't have enough water they'll get two hit counters and if they don't have uh, enough either food and water then they'll get three health counters so you'll want to be careful on placing these clan members on the table if you don't have the means to support them um, along those lines and this is a pretty big rule change um, something that I'd discovered in this manual. Um, Any time that your clan member becomes fully nourished, you remove all health, uh, health counters from it. So um, in order for a character to really die in this game, at least with the revised rule set, you'll have to be uh, malnourished and remain malnourished for a certain number of turns in order for the counter to hit six or more. So that's an interesting game changer, I think. Um, characters will rely less um, on directly attacking their opponent every turn just to wither away their health, uh, whereas they'll be more just striking the enemy to remove cards from their character, and over a series of turns they'll eventually remain malnourished and die off. So that's uh, pretty interesting. Characters die a little bit more slowly this way, um, but helps to balance out the game because you're limited on how many cards you have in this particular rule set. Now I admittedly threw a lot at you, uh, but just keep in mind that players will be trying to play these clan members, keep 
keep them nourished, attach various cards to these clan members to try and keep them alive and give them buffs. Uh, and they'll be trying to build a team of uh, three clan members that are fully nourished. The first player that manages to do that, get uh, three clan members on the table and keep them fully nourished uh, for that turn, uh, will uh, win the game. So you'll want to try and uh, keep your clan members surviving while at the same time uh, trying to eliminate the other player's clan members. Now if at any point um, at the end of your full turn that you don't have any clan members uh, in front of you, you are eliminated from the game. So it's important to keep at least one clan member in front of you, even if you can't keep them nourished. Uh, try and keep one in front of you just so that you aren't eliminated from the game altogether. And uh, again, the player that manages to keep three clan members on the table in front of them and keep them fully nourished will end up winning the game. Now that's just a very brief look at survivalistic. Again, I didn't cover all of the rules found in the manual, but this should just give you a nice general overview as far as how the game is played. Um, I'm enjoying the newer version. Um, the rulebook is a lot easier to read, and the rule changes are pretty significant. Um, granted, there's not a lot of them, but the rules that are changed um, do affect gameplay in a major way. So yeah, definitely check this game out if you haven't already. You can find it on the Game Crafter. Uh, if you want to check out my review, you can www.dadsgamingaddiction.com, or you can click on the links in the below description. That'll take you there as well. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.